Hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Asley of JonathanAsley.com and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, who pays for the first date? All right, really quickly, if you're new to my YouTube channel, these are, uh, please subscribe to, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified of new content. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Also, these are my weekend videos shot, on, shot out on my balcony, similar to the videos I shoot in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. Check out the link below if you'd like to join the group. This group allows you to have direct access to me on a regular basis, and if you post questions, I shoot videos specifically for you in the group. All right. Let's talk about, let's pull this out, who should pay for a first date? <laughs> it's my credit card. All right, so this topic is one, uh, it's actually a controversial topic because there's uh, different opinions on this. So I'm gonna share with you my perception, my opinion on this. And I'm, this is gonna take a little while to go through the whole alliteration of this, so give me a chance to get into this. So first and foremost, um, Let's just establish right off the bat that it is not a man's responsibility to pay for a date. It is not, it is not the responsibility of one gender to pay for dates. I just want to establish that very quickly. It's not the responsibility, okay? Now, when dating, I think it's important to recognize that the person that does the asking is the person who should treat because Paying for a date should come from a place of generosity and not from a place of expectation. Let me repeat that. It should come from a place of generosity and not from a place of expectation just based on the gender. And since my audience is predominantly women, it is not, ex let me just say, that it is not uh, a man's responsibility to pay just because he's a man. Just like it's not your responsibility to have sex with a man on a first date because you're a woman and you wouldn't, if a man is expecting that of you, you would be offended. And if you're expecting it from a man, he has a right to be offended from an expectation perspective. Now, I said a moment ago, the person who does the asking should be the one that does the paying. Now, here's where the challenge happens in most dating scenarios today. For the most part, most people are meeting total strangers. In fact, roughly, I would say well over 50, 60, 70 percent of first dates are with people that you've connected through the internet. So they're a total stranger. And because they're a total stranger, the, the suggestion of meeting is a mutual meeting. It's not even really a true date the first time. It's a first meeting. That's why we almost have to differentiate if you're meeting, if, you know, that first time you're meeting someone is not really a date. It's just a meeting. This is why I want to shift the narrative on understanding that just because the guy might take the lead in initiating the meeting, it's two people coming together like two friends coming together to meet with one another. And if two friends meet, there's no expectation. God, there's something on my face. No expectation that the other person is supposed to pay for them. Okay? So I want to be clear about that. Now, there's a couple things more I want to lean into with this conversation. First and foremost is that, um, again, it's not the responsibility of one gender to pay. Now, most men offer to pay because we were trained, we were raised that way. I like the way Matthew Hussey says it. He says, most men are, you know, are, if they were raised right, they would pay. And he also said that most women would offer to contribute if they were raised right, okay? Now, some of you are listening to the narrative of this following type of thing. Well, women spend a lot of money getting themselves dressed up for a first date, so it's a man's, a man has to pay for that reason. That's a bullshit reason. Just because you, and by the way, ladies, I wouldn't suggest spending lots of money getting dressed up for a first date for a total stranger. So this narrative that just because you spent money, there's an expectation that he must pay for it. It's his responsibility, and that's not fair, okay? Now, I'm, I'm also a believer that the person who tends to make the most money should be the one who contributes most in the relationship. Now, some of you might say, well, women make less money out in the workforce than men. I've got a hair here. Um, women make less money out in the workforce. I, whether that's true or not, and I don't know any statistics on that, here's the thing. 
if a woman makes a hundred grand a year and a man makes a hundred grand a year, what does it matter? It's not like you know you're you know you're equally making the amount of money. So that whole society narrative doesn't apply to the individuals. And if you make a hundred grand a year and makes eighty thousand dollars a year, would you expect him to make you pay for the first date because you made more money? No. I think in relationship, I, it, it's absolutely important to talk about money early on in the relationship because the reality is, is money ends up being one of the top issues for divorce. In fact, 50% of divorces cite money as the problem in relationship. And there's a couple other things I wanna lean into today. By the way, my t-shirt says, um, there is no spoon, there is no spoon. Let's see if you know what movie reference there is to that. It's kind of related to this topic. There is no one size fits all. I do wanna say though this. By the way, my coffee mug says do all things with love. And that's really what's most important here about this conversation of who pays for a date. This should come from a place of generosity for both people. Both people should want to do it from a place of generosity. That's the spiritual way to approach a dating process, not based on gender, but based on someone's heart. And quite frankly, I'd like to see both people saying, I wanna pay because I'm a generous person. Okay, not based on their gender or expectation, but based on I'm a generous person. This is why I love the book if the Buddha dated, if the Buddha dated, this is a spiritual way of dating that takes out the gender roles and expectations and leans into a conversation of how to connect with someone's heart. Because the minute you've established this narrative that someone is supposed to do something based on their gender, you're already setting up the relationship for failure. And that's not what a compassionate, heart-centered, loving person does. That's not what love does. And I want you to reach inside of yourself and ask, what's really most important for me? Do I want to connect with someone's heart or do I have an expectation based on gender? Now, I want to say something. This video is going to probably catch a lot of flack. I'm going to catch a lot of crap for it from some people because they have expectations in their lives. And anyone who has expectations is operating from an egoic place. And thankfully, I've read the book, this book, the Subtle Art of Not Giving a Blank. Okay, you read it. And you know what? If you don't like me for this video, that's okay because I love myself enough to know that what matters most is how I care about myself. Now, there's something else I want to say here for predominantly the women here. By the way, ladies, I invite you to give this video to a man or send this video to a man and see how he responds to it. So I want to talk about a couple other things right now. So please give me a minute or two. First and foremost, here in the United States, the average person makes less than, 80% of the population makes less than $100,000 a year. So right off the bat, let's just face it, it takes $150,000 a year just to survive. And that's an exaggeration, I'm just being silly. But the reality is, is most people don't have the resources to pay for someone else's experience all the time. So that's the first thing. Now, some of you might be saying, well, Jonathan, if I contribute or offer to pay, and by the way, I haven't suggested what you should do yet. I'll be getting to that in a second. I might offend a man. I might offend his masculine energy. First off, suggesting that you want to contribute on a date, is if that offends someone's masculinity, then they have a real weak sense of security within themselves. It offends their masculinity. And if a man gets overly ups upset that you've offered to contribute, two things are going on here. A, he can't receive generosity, but most importantly, secondly, he might be have a person that has control issues. If he can't receive and accept your generosity, he might have control issues. So this whole narrative that men get upset because you've contributed to the process, let me tell you something, any man that rejects your generosity is gonna have a hard time accepting it later on down the road in your relationship. Now, so what's the best way to operate here? Let's face it, traditionally men are going to pay the first date. That's just the you know, that's what's going to happen. That's the way we were raised. It's most likely. I certainly believe in contributing or maybe picking up the, picking up the, 
the tax or the tip or picking up the valet, that's certainly a generous thing you can do. Certainly following up maybe on the second or third date saying, hey, I'd like to, I was so grateful that you treated on this date. I'd like to demonstrate my generosity by treating on the next date. And that is a much more compassionate, loving way to approach the process. And eventually, again, the person who makes the most should be the one contributing the most. And if you both are equally yoked in your financial life, and for the most part in your, you know, your expenses in your life, then you both should equally be contributing to the process of getting to know one another. Let me repeat that, you should both be equally be investing in the process of getting to know one another. And that includes treating each other out to a meal or picking up a gift or paying for the movies or that sort of thing. It should be a, a mutual exchange because when it's operated from a place of mutual exchange, you actually create deeper respect for one another. Now, I know I'm gonna catch flack from those feminine energy coaches because the man is supposed to claim you and he's supposed to be chivalrous and that's his expectations. Let me just tell you this to those people that hear that rhetoric in my mind. Most men actually appreciate a woman who invests financially in the process and we actually have a greater level of respect for a woman who does that. Let me repeat that. We have a greater level of respect for a woman who at least contributes or at least makes the offer to contribute and not the fake you know, purse, you know, you know, reaching into the purse. And I invite you to give this video to send this video to any man and see how he feels about it. Why don't you ask men how they feel about a woman who contributes from a place of generosity? And again, the guys who get offended or, or get angry or can't receive, they typically have issues. And I would be more concerned about that. So when it comes to who pays for a first date, Certainly the person who does the asking is the one that should be, you know, contributing. <laughs> and if it's a first meeting, I certainly think that making the gesture and even contributing, and by the way, it's not offensive to a man that you do that. And what I mean to say is, you can also offer to pay, what I'm about to say is because some people might think that by you offering to pay, you're not interested in another date. If you're actually interested in another date, you just simply say, hey, I want to contribute today and I wanna see you again. In fact, I like you so much that I want to contribute. Is that okay with you? He'll most likely reject it if he really likes you as well. Make the offer and then see what happens. All right, I've covered a lot here. As I said, I'm gonna catch a lot of flack. Uh, please be kind. <laughs> I'm gonna bring in Salty here, for those of you who know Salty. I'm gonna bring him in here to be my protector if anyone gets angry over this video. All right, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below. If you know where the t-shirt reference is, please post it below. As always, if you find value in the group, um, if you find value in this, please share this video with your friends. And again, if you liked it, please hit that like button. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm gonna reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm gonna ask you to turn to someone or a pet or a teddy bear or a pillow and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love and we can all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now.